You're listening to Big World Network. Delroy vs. the Ishtari. Season 2, Episode 2, Compound Problems. Written and read by Baron Stevens. We dashed out of the military transport ship and stared at the Ishtari horde chasing toward us from their royal ship. Which way do we go to find the men? I asked Stella. Thanks to your lunacy, we don't have time for that. We'll have to come back for them later. Hey, look, if it wasn't for me manning that blaster cannon, we'd already be up to our necks in lobsters. I suppose. Stella ran over to the hover vehicle, pushed the pot off, and climbed into the driver's seat. Minx and I wasted no time clamoring aboard. Once we were in our seats, Stella started it up, punched the accelerator, and sent us up and toward the perimeter fence. Unfortunately, we only puttered across the landing field. When I looked toward the ranks of angry Ishtari, I saw several of them heading for their two-passenger scout vehicles. Great. Looks like we're about to have company. I figured their sleek military craft would overtake us in a matter of seconds. Stella laughed. It was such a beautiful sound. Don't worry, those things aren't going anywhere. She reached into her vest and pulled out a bunch of wires from one of the pockets. I paid them a visit earlier. You're as intelligent as you are beautiful, I said, meaning it. Her forehead scrunched. Thanks, I think. I looked back down to see our shelled friends, sitting on their machines and looking around in bewilderment. Ha! Take that, you moronic bottom feeders! I put my fist toward them as we flew over the fence and into the neighboring ravine. Since this vehicle could fly higher, we didn't have to make as many twists and turns as with the hover cycle. It just wasn't as fast. When we were almost to the women's compound, Stella swore as she noticed something on the scanner. What is it? I asked. Without answering, Stella put the vehicle into a dive and brought us to a sudden stop under a small overhang of rock, barely fitting under its shadow. She powered down the engine and said, They repaired their scout craft a lot faster than I expected. Let's just hope we got out of sight before they saw us. We heard the hover vehicle zip by overhead. None of them slowed down or landed near our hiding place. Once the hum died away, we all let out a collective sigh. Even Minx, who doesn't have any lungs. So, what's your plan, O oh gloriously gorgeous leader? I asked Stella. We'll wait for nightfall, make a run for your ship, and hope we can fix it before they catch us. I wouldn't count on making quick repairs. This glorified waffle iron on tread saw to that. I jerked my thumb towards Minx. Sir, I did my best considering that I'm not programmed for ship repair. You had no reason to shoot me for it. You shot him? Stella asked. Yes, Minx answered. For the seventh time. Sixth. And quit your complaining. I've never shot you anywhere vital. Yet. But this last time, Master Delroy blew out my left treads. The time before that, he shot out my cleaning attachment. Stella looked at me like I was a rat crawling out of a sewer. That's terrible. Believe me, Miss Stella, you haven't heard the worst of it. There was the time he also... Minx, I order you to shut up. Stella doesn't want to hear your whining. Stella sat up. Oh, yes, I do. Tell me what awful things this Cretan has done to you, and I'll add them to my report when I drag his sorry hide in to collect the bounty. I'm sorry, Miss Stella, but since he is my master, I'm afraid I must comply with his wishes. That's too bad. Don't worry. Once he's in jail, I'll find a better master. That would be most appreciated, Mink said. Stella winked at me before her face turned into a frown. Until then, we need to find some clothes, because if we don't get something to cover up that pasty white belly of his, I'm going to throw up. What do you mean, pasty white belly? I asked, looking down at it. She is right, sir, Minx piped in. Except now, it looks more of a pasty puke green. Stella laughed and nodded before she peeked out from our hiding place. It's clear for the moment. Stay here, I'm going to scout out the area. Okay, be careful. Stella paused as she looked at me thoughtfully. I will. She drew the blaster pistol from her shoulder bag and took off. I watched her go, admiring her grace and beauty as she went. What was that for, sir? Minx asked. What was what? That sigh. I didn't sigh. Yes, you did. I've heard you humans make noises like that many times over the years. It was a sigh of love. 
Of course it was. Do you know how hard it is to watch your future wife risk her life on your behalf? Can't say I do, sir. We sat in silence for a long time while I kept my ears open for any sounds. The longer Stella stayed away, the greater my anxiety for her safety increased. Just when I couldn't stand it any longer, and I was about to go look for her, some rocks clattered outside of our shelter. I searched around for a weapon, but all I was armed with was a sash and my good looks. To my relief, it was Stella who popped into sight. She tossed something pink at me. What's this? I held it out so that I could hold it up. It was a pink dress. I brought you a present. I snuck into the compound and got this for you. It should fit. Gee, thanks. I wasn't sure which was worse, running around wearing green slime and a loincloth or decked out all purdy in a pink dress. I chose the dress, since it was better than running around like a pasty green Tarzan wannabe. You know I hate pink, right? Yep, Stella said, her eyes sparkling. It matches your eyes, sir, Minx added. I glared at him before I said to Stella, So, my love, what's it look like out there? Not good. The sky is filled with patrols. There are also a couple of guards now posted at the compound. There's no way to get past them without them seeing us. Can't you take them out like those others? You know, use that warrior princess magic of yours? She shook her head. I've been lucky so far. Those critters aren't that easy to take out, and this blaster is useless against their shells. She held up the blaster before tucking it back into her shoulder bag. But I saw you thrust a knife through them as if their armor was made of paper. When I tried it, all I did was bruise my hand. Don't tell me you used a regular knife. Well, yeah. She pulled her knife out of the bag and activated the blade. The tip blurred as it vibrated. Oh, here I thought you were some kind of superhero or something. She smiled and shook her beautiful head of brown hair. No, not even close. Okay, so how do we get past them? We're going to have to wait another hour until nightfall, then hope we can skirt around them. So we waited. I tried to engage Stella in some small talk, but she decided to take a little nap instead. I suppose I should have taken one too, but I enjoyed watching her sleep. She was so beautiful. But not only that, she was athletic, capable, had a quick wit, and keen intelligence. The perfect woman. Or at least my perfect woman. She would make a perfect accomplice, or, I mean, partner in some of my business ventures. I just needed to figure out a way to convince her to join me. Once the sun set, Stella woke up and looked out from our hiding place. There are no other patrols near right now. This may be our chance. She hopped onto the hover vehicle while Minx and I climbed in back. After checking the scanner, she started it up and we flew out from under the overhang. We stayed low to the ground and went slowly, skirting between the edge of the hills and the women's compound as we made our way toward the sand dunes. So far, so good. A loud metal clang sounded and the vehicle jolted hard to the left. Stella fought with the controls, but it was useless. The craft leaned sideways before impacting the rocky sand. All three of us tumbled out as it skidded along the ground with the shrill scraping of metal on rock. Once it ground to a halt, I saw a large metal horseshoe projectile protruding from its side. So much for our stealthy escape. An Ishtari hover cycle came from the direction of the compound and zoomed toward us. Run, Stella ordered. Head for the compound where there's some cover. The compound was only a couple hundred meters away, and we were on the side where I'd cut the hole. We took off as fast as we could. The hover vehicle dropped lower and honed its sights on us. One of the sticky nets erupted from the front. Out of reflex, I dove for the ground as it shot over me, barely missing. Minx cried out as the Ishtari craft zoomed over our heads. I jumped up and spun around to see Minx pinned to the ground by the net. Hang on, I said to him. No, sir, leave me. It's you and Miss Stella they're after. I'll be fine. I tried to pull the netting off of him, but my hands almost got stuck as well. Sorry, buddy. It's okay, sir. Go. You and Miss Stella can come back for me later. I knew he was right, but I hated the thought of leaving him. Why? I'd never cared that much for him before. What was happening to me? The Astari banked and turned back toward me again. Delroy, hurry! Stella shouted from where she crouched near the hole in the fence. The blaster pistol was out and she fired at the craft, causing them to have to swerve to avoid the shots. I took off toward her, expecting any second to feel another sticky net slam into me. To my surprise, 
I made it to the hole and dove through, with Stella close behind. Now what? I asked, gasping for air. Let's split up. Maybe if you create a distraction, I can get a good shot at their vehicle and disable it. Or better yet, maybe we can steal it. How do I create a distraction? I don't know. Run through the middle of the compound and scream your head off like an idiot. That should work. Okay, but I'm only doing this because I love you. With that, I ran out toward the central area of the compound. While on my way, I hugged the shadows and kept an eye on the sky. As I reached the center of the compound, I heard the patrol ship hum above me before settling down to a gentle landing there. The two Ishtari disembarked with crossbow guns ready. So, they intended to hunt us down on foot. I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing. Of course, this would give Stella an opportunity to steal their hovercraft. If I could draw them away, that would give her a chance. Well, here went nothing. I took a deep breath, took off running, and yelled at the top of my lungs. That got their attention. I hoped they would chase after me, but instead, they raised their crossbows and fired. One of the metal projectiles slashed into the wall of the building next to me and went clean through. At that point, my fake scream turned into a real one. Adrenaline rushed through me and enabled me to run faster than I ever had in my life. I darted around the corner of the building as another projectile thunked behind me. I could hear the Ishtari giving chase. I didn't see anywhere else to duck and hide. I dove into the sand as another projectile whizzed over my head. A loud crack sounded behind me. I turned around in time to see one of the Ishtari stumble and collapse to the ground after a giant horseshoe projectile ripped through it. The craft hovered in the air with Stella aboard. She fired again. Another projectile fired toward the other Ishtari, but it managed to dodge aside. It spun around and brought its crossbow up, firing at the scout craft. The Ishtari's projectile smacked into the side of the hovercraft and sent it spinning out of control. It dumped Stella out, causing her to hit the ground hard. The Ishtari deftly reloaded its crossbow from a bag at its side and marched toward Stella's still form. been a presentation of Big World Network. Visit us on bigworldnetwork.com for more free weekly series or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Listening to Big World Network.